Hey kids, welcome back to Infamous 2! We're gonna get some words from a bird. Sorry, we're making Spongebob Joseph jokes, and then I'm just Joseph Spongebob's on the brain right now. <laughs> that new facility you folks are building below the carriage house, it's... That new facility, you folks! <laughs> Bertrand's totally that guy, you know? He's like the guy we all make fun of with the southern voice. But he's just that guy. In, yeah, in the game. he really is. And then suddenly he gets an army behind him. Like, how, how'd that happen? What? Well, I mean, you know, most people like that would kind of get a militia behind. You know, especially if you got a guy that's doing that fucking shit out of nowhere, that fucking <laughs> over someone's head, then I would get an army around me too. Anyway, since the audio cut out, let's just fast forward to the objective where we need to go. But in between, let's get the Sly Cooper outfit. And by that I mean the Sly yeah, Cooper weapon. I'm a little... I'm a little I'm, uh, I mean, I guess you're you're zooming it because we're re-recording it. Because, like, we actually had a bit where we talked about the Sly Cooper cane in the first one. I was like, come on, man. Yeah, that's pretty much... I just fast-forwarded it because, yeah, we've already seen it before. So, might as well. Yeah. I actually assume... You fast forwarded it fully, went back in and fast forwarded it more because we were going back to, to post commentary. I hope you didn't actually fast forward that part of the fucking recording. No, I mean, we're gonna keep the cane on for a while anyway, so we can still talk about, like, just the outfits in the game and what does yeah. and doesn't work Gee. about them. Like for a decent while. I just hope, I hope you don't take certain parts of our recording and then just fast forward it, even though we actually have something to say about that part of the game. Yeah, it's like whenever there's something that is something we need to say or want to say about something, I'm not going to cut that out. It's like if it's decent, interesting commentary, there's no Get reason to fast forward through that to cut it out unless it's legitimately a hindrance. That flash yard's going to be easy pickings. It like, it's just Welcome like, to I'm Talk saying things to fill that air. I'm saying things to fill that air. I'm saying things to... I'm gonna just say that now, <laughs> when I actually can't think of something for a second. I'm gonna be like, I'm saying things to fill that air. I am saying things to fill that air. Words so that uh, people uh, hear uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said, word! Hey. <laughs> I'm hip. You know what, I I'm hip with the kiddos. And because, really you know, I have to, job, I'm gonna be beat up people for blast shards. I would tail him myself, but he just hit because, you know, he's hit that the part of the addiction where he has to just beat people up now to fill, beat really his need. Never see me. Don't look up. I mean, there's the good version where you can defuse bombs made out of them, but there's also just like, why, why not? Why not just take it off of somebody who's holding it out in public? And, 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 <laughs> Yep, let's look through everyone's purses and pockets till we get the cocaine we need. Nah, they're literally holding it in their hand. Like, it, it's literally in the public vicinity. You're not hiding it. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, what was I gonna say? Dude, if you can make bombs out of cocaine or meth or something, I'd look at people and go, Why are you so stupid as to shooting it into your body, you idiot? Like, you can make bombs with that shit. It's useful as fuck. <laughs> Which, technically, some of the stuff that goes into drugs you can make bombs with, because I know nitroglycerin is something that you can make bombs with. Yeah, it's like nitroglycerin is like nitro is highly reactive. Okay. Yeah, and if like, I remember there are certain right. compounds that go into other drugs and it's like what the fuck? You're putting bomb material into your body, dude. Of course it's gonna fuck you up. Just 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 make it bombs. What are you doing? Put bombs in your nose, you idiot. What are you doing? I want to hear a ticking sound in my brain before I get high. Penal code. <laughs> Thanks, Ding! There goes my brain. <laughs> I'd be worried if I hear a kaboom. <laughs> kaboom. Uh, no man, it's just it's just ca it's called the bomb for a reason. Uh, uh, I know. I'll go sit in my corner. So one of the reasons I do love Cole's character, and I didn't get to say this the first time because I didn't really think about it at the time, but now I think about it. One of the things I do love about Cole's character <coughs> is he is kind of the he is the head of the ship of no shit. Like, how do I word this? 
He is he he hates Captain Obvious's and he will fucking the shit on them every single chance he gets. House on He's constantly looking at characters okay, in the game and being like, "Yeah, no shit, I get it. Fuck off." Like, I love a protagonist that just kind of gets it. He doesn't need to be told every single little thing. It's like he just kind of knows what he's doing, and he kind of actually gets an attitude to people for telling him what to do because he knows what he's doing. Yeah, and that can have its own brand of, like, clever writing and humor in some aspects, which is great when it's taken advantage of. Yeah. Sometimes it's a little much because the game will still explain ad nauseum and still over-explain certain things to you and still have Quo be like, and it's like, uh, then his snarkiness kind of doesn't work because he's not actually stopping it from happening. Um, another famous example, which we may or may not see, because I don't know if I really want to play it, and I don't know if anyone else wants to, but okay. in Doom 2016, where the Doom guy just starts the game by fucking breaking the screen. And in reality, they really don't over-explain anything anymore after that point. They tell you certain things, but, like, what's the space doesn't just keep coming in after that point in the game. Aggressively. Also, fucking stupid Nidhogg. So what the fuck you are. These things are Four. called Ravagers, and they're mini-bosses that you're going to find all around the map after this point of the game. Uh, Surprisingly, the best way to deal with them is melee and grenades. Yeah, and also getting onto the high ground. I forgot that we ran into our first one during this session. Yeah, you actually encounter them pretty early on, because, like I said, this is the sub-boss. Just imagine how much worse the actual main boss would be if this is just yeah. a sub boss. Yeah. We also learned something interesting. We're thinking out because I made a statement in the original cut of this where I was like, "Yeah, you can you can hang on the roofs and then never uh, be touched by him because he has to." Go yeah, I think it was right here actually. Two. Like he, you said something along the lines of, "He can't go on the yeah. roof." And then, like, moments after that, then, suddenly he goes onto the there roof, it is. like, there. There he is. He goes on the roof. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I literally said it as he was on the pole, and that happened, and I literally... I was stand corrected. I did <laughs> But it's never happened to me. Like, I genuinely has never happened to me the time I played this game. I mean, like, it could be something so I was proven wrong. I'm thinking about it. Maybe? I but even then, if probably. it's just something with the innate programming, then yeah, that's just... Wow. Yeah. You got really lucky. Yeah, no, the, that entire house of fucking people is, like, nearly dead, if not injured right now, because he fucking, if you think about it, he tore through the the bottom of the ground and There's went up into the There's people still left house. in there? Eh, it's the bayou. I mean, it's, you know, people live in the ghetto their whole lives and have a bunch of crime scenes, violence, and all that shit. I'm pretty sure Mr. Lightning McZappy Zap isn't going to make someone go, oh, I'm not going to get out of this home. I pay for this home. And I would agree with them. Fuck you, Lightning Zappy Zappy man. I paid for my home. I'm not leaving. I guess that's a fair point. I think I went on a bit of a tangent that was a little extended, and I, I think it seems uh, a little crazier than I meant it to seem, so uh, apologies. <laughs> I think I like how like almost just like okay he's just gonna go on a giant ghetto rant again okay don't worry he gets like this sometimes I mean at the same time I'm kind of just going through the motions with this and also wondering how why the ravager him? does not get hit by the electricity in the water also I've never seen the ravager yeah never seen the ravager go down there in my playthrough of the game like and I've fought multiple of these around this area too because he responds in this area after a certain point and he just keeps being here and it's like I fought him here and it's like I've never seen him go into the ravine yeah and the funny thing the weirdest part about that to me is the fact that zapping the water he's in doesn't hurt it. This enemy is fucking annoying. Like it's uh, it's hard it to is. not say it's the most annoying character like fight in the game. Cole, it's at least because you fight him so free. See you there. You're yeah. hurry you fight him a couple times and then also he's just a pain in the dick. On top of it, so it's like bosses that are annoying like that and then you see them multiple times are always kind of a problem. Yeah, and even then, it's just like there's not that much that you can do 
in terms of good design just to work around that because like yeah it's a uh, improvement in terms of like enemy design and variation compared to the first game but at the same time there's a point to where you it's should not a, say not a home run. no yeah this is not a good but, idea stop it that's yeah cool. no there's a point that should have been like it's too tedious uh, please just stop. <laughs> yeah. It's like the Ravagers are that line of this is too because tedious, um, and I hate this. Yeah, it also really I'm does not help that I'm wait. on hard mode, so that basically means that they're hey. at the most health possible. How long did we record last I don't remember it being that long. Uh, we recorded about we... two hours. Keep him away from us. Did we get the... See you later, old oh, well, I guess that makes sense, because this is Batman. Okay, because I'm thinking of a timeline of events in my head, and I'm like, I remember Quo... Never mind. I mean, I'm not going to spoil for LP's sake, but at the same time, I do remember a certain part in the story having already been covered by the time we reported last. But I don't know. Maybe my mind's blurring things together. Yeah, I it think tends that's to happen. It yeah. But now we have anyway, a flashback a mission to Good. protect the bus, except this time it's protect the truck. Protect the thing. Protect the reality X of moving this is, object. Yeah, the reality of this is they did actually uh, improve on it. Like, they improved on this system in this game it's not as tedious and bad um but there's not too many in this game i think there's only like one or two like you said there's only like very few times where you have to actually protect the moving vehicle or protect the thing yeah i and think there's only a good. handful of them because that the is one of the period yeah which is good because like in the infamous it, it was a good hard big percentage of the game and i think it's because for, in all honesty, I think they also didn't understand, like, they, I, we talked about the development struggles of one in the LP, but they, like, didn't really, you know, understand the scope of their game, so they did kind of just take a certain mission type, two certain mission types, and just chuck a bunch of them in the fucking game, just to pad it out, and just to fill in the, whole, the gaps, so to say. Like, the entire middle of the game is just a bunch of these type of missions, <coughs> in this one. Oh yeah, if Which it is isn't I think just that, that that middle go ahead. If it wasn't just like oh kill X amount of enemies in Y area with this limitation, it was protect the thing. And that yeah, and, that got and, tiring and boring very yeah. quickly. It's why it's why that entire middle chunk of infamous two was just so draining. Infamous one, not two. Draining. Infamous one. I'm sorry. I'm drained okay. myself. Uh, Cole drained me. I'm sorry. Yeah. He drained my brain energy. <laughs> uh, infamous one was so draining in that regard because, again, a whole chunk of the game is just that. A whole quarter of it is just this. I'd say third. Because we divided Infamous one into thirds in our brain. And it yeah. was like one. The middle third of that game was just this shit, and it was frustrating. Yeah, it really was. Because, I mean, yeah, thirds is probably the best way to divide Infamous hey, 1 in terms of chunks. Because, like yeah. in all there's, honesty, there's a good there beginning. was the first island, the, the second really island, good. and then the final island, so it really does make sense to yeah. divide into thirds. He was gone. Well, okay, yeah. Well, like even regardless, island or not, like the first, first quarter, first third of the game, really good. Introduces everything, makes the universe really good. Then you get the middle third of the game where it's like tedious as shit. The boss isn't even cool. The junk people are stupid. Um, the side missions are all boring to the point to where we didn't even really want to do many of them. Um, the main missions are kind of boring. And then I even remember going to a junkyard, and that junkyard was cool at first, and then I got tired of it, even the time I played the game. Um, and then the final third of the game, which is kind of a straight shot to the end, but it's still pretty cool, even if I don't necessarily like the story beats of the ending. Infamous 1 is a good game, but yeah, like we said in the LP, it's just very flawed. Yeah. Also, Wolf is dead and Quo is kidnapped? I think. Yeah, Quo oh, well. got kidnapped and Wolf well. got shot oh, in the head. Yeah. What the hell happened? Well, it's a little well. dark and brutal if you Wolf's fucking think dead. about it. As I clip through a fence. I don't really feel like talking right now. 
Listen. Oh. I'll see you Sometimes later. you have to do what you gotta do and get to where you gotta get to fast. Fair enough. Speaking of fast, fast forward. <laughs> And on the way to try and grab a flash out, I died. You deserve that. Your addiction is a problem. You need to heal. Mentally. I mean, true. Oh yeah, there was also this moment here where we had a bunch of... Uh... Dark. There's also this area here where we just saw the sign that had all these references on it and just name like just names that were references to multiple different things and it was this is kind of funny because we had a moment and a yeah. thing i didn't notice Which before is, cool is that the sign underneath there actually has an advertisement for sly 4 yeah which is the thing i noticed which was funny because we did get a sly 4 and almost soon after infamous 2 actually yeah just um, uh not by yeah. sucker punch yeah, and also not as good, even though that's not terrible either. <laughs> no, I think Fly Four though is kind of like it's it's a fun game. I'd like a Sly Five, but I don't know if they have enough gameplay weight to really make another one and have people interested in it. Yeah, and I think that's really the problem with Sly Cooper at the moment. It's just like, what do you do yeah. with Sly Cooper? After three. It was, it was strange. I wanted a four after the cliffhanger that three leaves you on. But after getting hey, four, Cole? and it's not being, you know, it's not a bad Shut game, but after man. what I've played, I'm like, I kind of just would have liked if that we'll series stayed a trilogy and was left dead after three. Feel a little low on options yeah, because there are multiple things in Sly 4 that are just like, like it or not, that deep, why did this need to happen? Couldn't it have just ended with three? I'm going to save most of this for the eventual Sly LP, but my final thoughts are also that, like, it really is a series that has two good games and two meh games. Even, uh, even, K uh, I almost said KH3, oh my god. I'm tired. Um, oh, Sly 3 itself is already when the series starts to become kind of eh. What's with the binoculars, Zeke? Spying on some chick in the shower? Not this time. Think I found he, this time he, says. he says as that's probably a regular occurrence. Right. Oh my lord. Alright. Go check it out. Thanks, man. It's good work. So now we go get to see what's going on in the in the swamp area. Hooray. Get to actually go to the best part of it being a bayou, is the swamps. Which honestly, the swamps are kind of cool. Even though I, I did get kind of annoyed by them because they're a bunch of giant lakes, and you are a electricity electricity zap zap man. So it's like, uh, what do? Water, yeah. Essentially, long story short, water and electricity don't mix, and these areas are a lot of water. Yeah, it's like, uh, water bad, electricity <coughs> good. I do they like do the kind of violin of the music, though. It's, it does add a bit of suspense. And I like it. Right. Yeah. Hey, Quo, you the soundtrack here? in 2 is a Whoa. lot better than uh, the soundtrack in 1, because 1 soundtrack tries to go atmospheric. And that can work for a lot of games, but it's not for your first attempt in a game that's not really made for atmosphere. Uh, atmospheric music, like, Infamous 2 actually goes with the actual soundtrack-ish, and it works for the better, I'd say. Yeah. And then here we have a new enemy type where, essentially, the long story short is they get as close as possible and then their heads explode. Yep. Totally not. Man, if only my life could be like that. Honestly, at some point, the malicious start getting boring. Well... 
like just in terms of That's like, oh, true. it's a guy in on, it's a guy in an orange get up with a gun. Well, yeah, and it's kind of true, and it's like that is a knock on Infamous Two in that I like Bertrand a lot, and he sticks throughout the entire game, but the 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 forces he has never get interesting. Like, say what you will about Infamous One, some of their their uh, Ravagers were cool. Like, they they like. Some of the bosses would be fun, like Sasha. I think her name was Sasha. She was really uh, cool. I do. Sasha was the essentially the leader of the first area in Infamous One. Yeah, and she was cool, and it was a genuine disappointment that it didn't follow trend with having super cool people up until Kessler. You know, having like a rogues gallery of sorts in in Gotham City, basically. It's like that would be the place to have that. But, I mean, even then, know. two for three ain't bad. In terms true. of batting average. Well, true. That's true. Two for three. Yeah. But also, at the same time, Kessler is kind of a cheat because of the twist of him being Cole. And also, also still, you don't see Kessler a lot, so his presence isn't that known. So I'd argue you don't really go two for three. He's, he's a fun final boss, and he is cool, but at the same time, he's underutilized as shit. Yeah, it should have been more of him throughout the entire game rather than just the end. Because, like, he's there for the end and he makes a great yeah. impact at the end. But he should have been there for more. Yeah, he should have been there for more. But, I don't know. Oh man, I thought the I thought the wooden crate would save me, but no. It breaks oh, man, just I like an actual wooden crate would. I'm, I, oh man, I thought the actual metal truck, the very thin, thin broken metal truck, would stop a gauntlet of bullets. And apparently, it did. Yeah, man. Next time, next time, I want to stop a Gatling gun of sorts. I'm just gonna hide behind an old rusted truck. It won't tear through it in seconds. No, what are you talking about? That's obviously bullshit. You're a liar. Get out of my life. Totally not. That's not how life works. Yeah, and I can zap through my fingers. So, you know, it goes both ways. Totally Actually, that is the thing I love about the... You know, I hate to say it, but like... And one of the reasons, because I bring up Yakuza all the time now, because I'm addicted, but one of the genuine reasons I do like that series is because it's, like, realism, and then it takes what we're doing right now and turns it into gameplay mechanics. Whoa, like, now. I can do all this stupid bullshit. Yes, you can do all this stupid bullshit, Kazuma Kiryu. Yes. Yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can, Kazuma. You're the best. Just but then in, point, in game looks and to in the cutscene, camera it's like, and gives oh, a cheesy okay. wink. Yeah. <laughs> that does kind of low-key happen in the newest one with Ichiban, where there's a fucking... I'm gonna spoil it. Because it's worth it, and it'll still be funny when it happens when we get down to it years from now. But there's a fucking side quest, call it, or a, as they call it, sub-story. And in the fucking dub... It was changed because it has to be changed, and it's perfect. And the change they made was this. In the dub, you run into an... You're in Japan in the series. In the dub, you run into an English-speaking man, and Ichiban goes, Huh? Oh, a foreigner. And he's speaking proper English to you. And in the dub, he still does it, and Ichiban almost damn near winks at the fucking camera after he says, Oh, an English-speaking foreigner looks at the camera and puts a <laughs> thumbs up. Because the joke is that you're already listening to English, so of course it's stupid sounding. So he just looks at the camera, quick thumbs up, and then just gets back to the sub story. Oh, <laughs> uh, that like, sounds oh, amazing. Okay. Yeah, it, it, he doesn't even smile. It's a stone face fucking thumbs up. It's amazing when games are self-aware like that. 
Yeah, well, and then I listened to, uh, because I saw it, and I was like, what the fuck is he thumbs upping for at the camera? And then I looked at the actual dev, the dub, uh, localization team, and they went, yeah, we actually requested Sega to make a change about this because it's just too on the nose. <laughs> and if they, like, we, I genuinely pitched, he pitched it to the director of the game, and he loved it, so he did it. He's like, yeah, what if they just winked at the camera? I mean, that's, that's his form of winking at the camera. But he basically went to the guy and said, dude, can we just have him, like, wink at the camera or something? This is absurd. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Yeah, and I love I love self-aware moments like that in media. Yeah, I'm just kind of sad that I would miss out on things like that. Because when it's something with authentic Japanese nature, it's like most of the time I would be listening to it in the Japanese language. Because... I mean, that's, that's kind true. of what it's based on, so I, why wouldn't I? But yeah. even then, it's just like, sometimes the dub is preferable over the sub, but it's, it's still just a case-by-case -case basis. It is. And, you know, Yakuza is all Japanese, except for this game. This, this is their first dub, and it is good. And I understand your logic, and there's a lot of times where I will listen to Japanese, but lately, there are some times where I'll just listen to the dub, because they're good. Like, Persona 5, and Persona in general, I'll pretty much listen to the dub, and four and five because i just think they're good dubs but uh in seven i was debating on both because i like the japanese voices a lot but also i think the dub was really good and they fit the characters very well and also i got that scene so i wouldn't have got i think it's if you turn it to japanese you actually don't get that scene i don't think you get him looking at the camera going thumbs up it would be honestly kind of weird if he did in all honesty I'm being yeah. redundant because but I'm still. tired. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Well, it still would be weird. It'd be like, why are you giving me a thumbs up, you idiot? But no, it's that's a cool, also a cool scenario. One of the few times in games where something's actually different <coughs> in game between the, the dub and the sub, a definable moment that's different or that you don't get. Yeah. So I do dig that a lot. Oh, I guess since we can somewhat go into basically go back into the game for just a moment speaking of differences between things we have the new character who is here to represent the evil uh, karma options Nyx and honestly yeah. also not, not only the evil karma options the only downside Sorry about that off. is that it extremely flattens her character not only does it represent the evil karma, she also represents the fact that other people can do different shit. It's not just Cole's a lightning man, or Zeke is a lightning man, or Kessler's a lightning man. It's... She does, like... I don't know what the fuck she actually does, to be honest. Uh, it's fire abilities, I think. Yeah. So she's kind of cool, um... But she represents the same problem that I have with something like Bioshock Infinite. Uh, that example is still good, so I'm still using it. Uh, but, no, uh... Yeah, we'll get... Let's just go ahead and explain that next time. <laughs>